Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, Procure for Health Twinings webinar. Thank you very much, all of you, for, for being here. So today, as you know, we have our second call for twinnings open until 5th December. Uh, so today we want to, to have a more practical session uh, regarding this uh, second call. So we will be uh, addressing uh, some uh, key aspects that you have to take into account and to consider when you are preparing your proposal, finding your partner for, for the, the twinning proposal and so on. And we also have the some uh, uh, awarded applicants from the first call. So you can have uh, the, you can get lesson learned and experience from, from their participation in the, in the first call for training. So my name is Maria uh, Bernabe from TIC Biomed and TIC Biomed is a, a supporting organization uh, of the Procure for Health community. Um, let me share with you some key, some housekeeping rules for the, um, for the webinar. So uh, the chat is uh, open. So if you want to introduce uh, yourself in the chat, you can type your name, organization, your LinkedIn profile, or, or whatever you want to say with uh, the others attended, because at the end, this is a practical session where you can find your, your partner maybe to, to apply for this call or to match make and network with other peers. Um, uh, if you ha have any question during the, the presentation, you can type them in the Q&A box. You can find this Q&A box in the bottom of the screen. So feel free to send us your, your question through, through this, um, this box. Um, as you can see, your microphone is muted during the presentation, uh, during the, the panelists and the speaker are talking. And then uh, in case you have any question, uh, the, the microphone can be open. So say your, your thoughts during, uh, during the Q&A that we will have at the end of the presentation. And if you want to, to open your microphone, just uh, ask us, uh, raise your hand and we will open it. So as you can see, this webinar is uh, being recorded and it will be available on our web page and the YouTube channels after this session. Uh, last but not least, uh, if you want to, to share that you are being part and taking part in this session, you can uh, tag us in our social media channels in Twitter or LinkedIn. You, you have in the slide, you have our usernames for this, um, for this uh, social media channel. So uh, let me go uh, very quickly through the agenda. So first of all, we will have our project coordinator, Carlos Larrañeta from Fundación Progreso y Salud. Uh, he will be uh, providing us a, a, an overview of the community, of our professional community. And then we will move to the, the second call for training. So we will have uh, Magnus from Innovation Scone, the, the leading of this uh, call for training. He will be uh, introducing this, uh, the, the overview and this uh, second call details. And then we will uh, go in depth with the, the awarded applicant from the first call, as I mentioned before. So we will have uh, Beatriz uh, from Navarra Biomed, Carla and Caterina from Hospital San Pau. So this is uh, one of the, the twinning that was uh, awarded in the first call for twinning. And then we will uh, have this uh, more practical uh, session uh, with Ali from uh, healthcare without harm. So he will he will be giving some tips uh, regarding the application process and the match making tool that we have available in our community to find the partner. Um, then uh, Magnus will uh, present the document structure, so the documentation that you have to submit to present and to apply to this call. And also uh, he will give you five uh, tips to prepare a, a good proposal. Then we will have uh, some time devoted to the Q&A session, and I will close the, the webinar, uh, giving you some information regarding our upcoming activities and webinar. 
So now I want to give the floor to Carlos, the coordinator of our community. So Carlos, is, the floor is yours. So you can give uh, your pitch. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Maria. Um, I'm going to be very brief. Let me first share my screen. And I just have a couple of few slides. Um, yes, to share it. Okay, here it is. I think now it's in full mode. Okay. Um, not yet, Carlos. Not, not yet in full mode? Now? Okay. Now it's simple mode. Perfect. Okay. Um, as I said, I'm I'm going to be very brief because I think the, the 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 main intention of this webinar is to be very practical and explaining uh what what, what is a, a twinning, what are the benefits uh from the very practical point of view and already ongoing experience and and to focus on how to submit a successful proposal. But anyhow, I have to, to set the ground and give an initial introduction on who are we, Procure for Health, what are we doing and why are we doing it, just in case there is anyone not yet familiar with us. So, um, okay, I'm, I'm Carlos Larrañeta, Maria already introduced me, coordinator of the network, of the community. I work for the Regional Ministry of Health of Andalusia specifically for the Technical Office for Public Procurement of Innovation. And as I said already, coordinator of this community, that of health and social care innovation procurers. This is how we started with this community one year and a half ago. And this is who we are right now. Um, as you can see, we're talking about procurers and then we have a number of supporting organizations, regional development agency, um, uh, consultancy services and, and so on. And also we are, um, we have within our communities potential suppliers of the solutions, innovation solutions we're seeking. Um, just one quick tip about this. When we talk here about procurers, we are talking about health and care services providers. Um, this group is anything but homogeneous. I mean, is, uh, we have from big ministries of health, national ministries of health, like the Turkey Ministry of Health, ranging from to, to regional ministries of health, like ourselves here in Andalusia, then to go to individual hospitals or even central purchasing bodies uh, that are in charge of, of well, purchasing activities on the healthcare and in countries like uh, France, Belgium, or, or, or Italy. So the the, the typology of, of these procurements is wide, but we have one common objective, which is to improve our organizations, to improve the health and care services we provide. This can be done from many phases. We do it from the side of uptake innovation, of the uptake of innovation. But for us, uptaking innovation is procuring innovation. And procurement of innovation is about being changing the, the paradigm and from being reactive to whatever is on the market and see if fits any of the needs we have, to being proactive and defining those needs, prioritizing those needs, sharing them with the innovation ecosystem around and, and around us and telling them if you are able to develop a solution, we will buy it, we will procure it. But also we go one step further, which is uh, telling the market if we like the solution you propose, we will also procure the last stages of its development. And we are doing this because we think that the procurement of innovation is, is the paradigm of co-creation. It's, it's a journey that the demand of this innovation, the supply of the innovation has to cover together. So um, these are the, 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 the basis of the public procurement of innovation. The benefits, I mean, for, for us and, and for me personally, it's quite clear. There is uh, probably no better instrument to use the funds we have to foster innovation around us. It's these funds and the resources are directly used to improve public services. We foster the ecosystem around us, giving them 
the possibility to already have a market a client if they are able to to develop a solution. And also, we are we are obviously having a direct impact on citizens. That is our latest latest uh, objective. But what's the deal here? It it is a complex tool, not complex conceptually. I just explain it or or technically because um, we don't need any fancy equipment or, or software. But it's it's very it's very complex in terms of engagement and coordinator of the many stakeholders that have to be involved in all the process. And we want to implement it in what is to my understanding the most complex organizations I know, which are health and care services uh, systems. So uh, in order to tackle this kind of problems in Procure for Health, we are working to build the capacity of the demand side of innovation. We want to foster cross-border cooperation, and we want to shape the future of this tool in Europe. And for that, twinnings is one of the main tools we have to do it. So, um, and good thing is that in this case, we are we have resources for those organizations that want to engage in these activities and with us available. And this is what the call for twinning is about. So um, I will finish now and leave the floor to, to those that have the, the real uh, interesting and executive things to say today. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Carlo. So now, Magnus, it's your turn, you can start. Thank you very much. And I believe you're seeing my presentation right now? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you very much, Maria, for the, and Carlos, for the introduction of the, uh, of the project and what we, What's our purpose here today? Um, my name is Magnus Wallengren. I work at a uh, organization called Innovation Skåne, which is the uh, publicly owned innovation company of the uh, regional healthcare provider Region Skåne uh, in the very south of Sweden. Uh, our role as a partner in this project is that we are hosting the so-called twinnings, um, twinnings opportunities uh, in the Procure for Health project and community. And uh, that's what we are here uh, to present today. More about the context of the funding opportunity and how to go about to apply for it. So um, while the uh, Procure for Health project uh, offer uh, a range of, of different types of capacity building tools or different uh, types of exercises in capacity building, uh, this external twinnings, I would say, is the most direct component uh, approaching external organizations which have an interest in, in advancing uh, their, their capacity and knowledge in, in innovation procurement. We do this through a series of calls, uh, open calls, and now uh, we are, have currently opened a second open call for, for twinnings and submitting your twinnings proposal. Uh, the purposes of these twinnings are quite simple. Uh, it is an instrument for knowledge exchange and capacity building. Uh, the twinnings that you propose are proposed uh, jointly in partnerships, and uh, you will, uh, for a winning bid, uh, receive uh, up to as much as uh, 30,000 euros for joint activities for these types of uh, um, uh, exchange and capacity building. Uh, if we would select two main uh, key uh, things to understand about the, the, these twinnings uh, and the, uh, the capacity building that we promote is that uh, we, we emphasize here that they are done to avoid reinventing the wheel by, by not, uh, and not initiating and creating new processes for your organization, but rather learn from existing processes and experiences which, which uh, have already happened within the field of innovation procurement. Uh, I believe that um, there are rarely a unique set of circumstances that's unique for, your, for only your organization, but a lot of the things and approaches and the products that you would be looking for have already been tried out, procured and deployed uh, already in, uh, in, uh, in previous uh, projects or initiatives in other organizations. And this is an opportunity to learn from those experiences and those processes. 
uh, the objective itself of a twinning is the, the active transfer of knowledge and experience around a variety of perspectives. It can be around the, the deployment and use of a certain specific product or service. It can be uh, around the process or methodology of certain procurement and deployment processes. It can be around the procurement strategy, finding a suitable procurement business model, and so on and so on. So there is a lot of flexibility in what you can achieve uh, by being funded from this funding instrument that we are offering. To just take a brief step back, I think uh, uh, many of us uh, realize that um, addressing unmet needs um, and by implementing an innovative products or service can be quite tricky and complex, specific, uh, especially when there is a collaboration between suppliers and, uh, and the buyers involved. Uh, these types of cooperations can take many forms. Uh, these forms need to be uh, properly understood and navigated to be, to be aligned with the legal frameworks. And this is what we support in doing in, in uh, by uh, Procure for Health. Um, during the process of, of um, finding out an unmet need, uh, procuring a solution and deploying that solution, there are several questions that need to be uh, understood and responded to uh, for the process to uh, progress. Uh, such as, for instance, what is our actual unmet need? What is currently available uh, on the market addressing that need? How do we safely engage with the industry or the market to discuss or have a dialogue around a certain specific unmet needs that you might have? And how do we procure uh, secure and scalable interoperable solutions for these unmet needs? and so on. So we must understand that there is a process involved for, for, for um, addressing these unmet needs, procuring the appropriate solution and deploying them. And, uh, this, and, and, by, and by submitting your proposal to, to our uh, uh, external twinnings, receiving the funding, you can take the first step or the important next step for you in this process towards being able to addressing your own methods. Um, so a little bit more, a little bit more detail into what that actually might mean. As mentioned, uh, you are submitting proposals uh, jointly uh, with, by, with two organizations or more. And in these proposals, you define and propose different sets of uh, an, an, knowledge exchange and capacity building activities between the two or three of you. You could have shared workshops, you could do study visits at different types of sites or facilities. You can perform market analysis to understand what is available on the market more around a specific set of unmet needs. You could, you could cover certain costs for external consulting and services around the process, around the products, or whatever is appropriate for your specific case. So again, there is a lot of flexibility in what can be done here as long as it advances your capacity in innovation procurement. There are certain uh, important dates here, of course, in, the, in uh, our application process uh, to, to uh, take note of. I would say that the most important one is the deadline for, for uh, submitting your proposals, which is uh, December 5th. Uh, after that, we will go through evaluation and awarding of the uh, received proposals. And um, I think that is it for now. I will get back to the structure of the documentations in a bit. But for now, I leave the word to uh, one of the um, one of the awarded applicants from our first open call for external twinnings. Great, Magnus. Thank you very much for your brief introduction regarding the, the second call for twin. And now we move to, to the real use case from, from Navarra Biomet and Hospital San Paul. So as I mentioned before, they were awarded in the first call. So thank you very much for being here today, uh, introducing your your case and your experience as, a, as an awarded applicant of this call for trainings from the Gifford Health community. 
So Beatriz, the, the floor is yours. You can start. Oh, thank you, Maria. And good morning, everyone. And it's a pleasure for me, for us, uh, sharing with you all our experience in Procure for Health and sharing the project that we are working on right now. So in this training, the two institutions that we are involved are uh, Fundación Miguel Servet Navarra Biomed as a doctor for the Navarra Health System and Hospital San Pau from Barcelona as originator. They have extensive, extensive experience in public procurement of innovation processes. And we, uh, Navarra Biomed, we are the scientific and technical support body of the Health Administration of Navarra. So the training is based as we being able to acquire knowledge from the Hospital San Pau and initiate a PPI process with its help. Uh, the Navarra Health si Healthcare System has no experience so far in participating in PPI processes. Here we proceed with classic tenders to purchase equipment, products, etc. So we see we need the, the help of Hospital San Pau from everything, for the team building, challenge definition within the PPI process, a key aspect of PPI implementation, etc. So we are trying to make an effective knowledge transfer among both partners. So because we see we share the same problems or barriers or challenges, so solutions in PPI can be fluently adopted. So we here in Navarra Biomed will, will implement the learnings in the Navarra Health System. So the scope of the project goes from the initial anal analysis of the situation to of the challenge also to the feasibility analysis of the implementation of the PPI process in our system. So in this slide, you can see why San Pau Hospital is, is for us a very good originator, because here you have some examples of different PCP and PPI projects where they are or have been involved. So the first one are EU funded projects, Stop and Go PPI, Ritmo Core PPI, Tika PCP, and others also Bronchial Navigator and drug code. So I think with their experience, we could be in a very good way implement or at least try to implement PPI processes in our institution. So what we proposed in the in the project in the in a technical aspect is this this exact table. So these are all the steps we are taking within the project. Uh, starting by the identification of the PPI process that we are starting in our organization. So also with the PPI consideration for the implementation in the, in the system, organizational engagement, training workshops. This is very important for us, the way we could engage, engage all the, the, the different people involved in during all the PPI process from the head of the service of the hospital in case we, we are working in, in some speciality of the hospital or to purchasing. Uh, every, every person is very important for us to be involved here. They are, we are going also to do the stakeholder mapping, a strategic alignment with the health system of Navarra, budget perspective also, and business case in the in the last part. This is what we are going to do during the, the six months that the project is planned to be. Now we are here in the training workshops. So in fact, next week, uh, a, team, a work team from Pamplona, we are going to visit Hospital San Pau and we have a very intensive agenda or a work agenda uh, where in the Hospital San Pau we are, we are going to do a lot. Well, we, we are start with, starting with the, with, a technical, with a technical challenge at the, at the um, key aspect of the, of the challenge we, are, we have chosen. And also we'll have uh, items related with the future tender also and the budget and so on. Then after that, we are trying to implement all the learns 
uh, that we are going to acquire next week here in Pamplona. So then they are coming from Barcelona to, to here to Navarra Biome, to Pamplona, and we'll work also with the with all the people involved here in in our hospital. So the, the meetings will be held to align needs, expectation and involvement in the process by department uh, with a disciplinary perspective. Uh, during the analysis of the organizational capacity from uh, professionals of San Pao will help to articulate the processes and the teams involved to conduct them here in the Navarra Health System. So this will help also to analyze the viability of PPI implementation process in the Navarra Health System. And will also help in the, to identify future projects to include in the procurement process in the, here in Navarra. And the main benefits of some of them here for us, mainly to overcome the barriers to the adoption of innovation procurement in the healthcare system of Navarra through the implementation of innovative processes, <clears throat> organizational or assistance that integrate multidisciplinary, play, multidisciplinary work teams, highly efficient, applying methodologies that improve current health activities and technologies. For the institution, the adoption of new working procedures related to PPI, as I said before, uh, this kind of procurement public uh, procurement um, has never been arranged here. We only have worked with uh, classic tenders. So the implementation of new purchasing processes uh, is very important also here. And the key implementation of the innovative technological solutions. And also for Navarra, for the region where we are here in Pamplona to improve the competitiveness of the business ecosystem. Uh, in terms of generation of new technological solutions, in terms of economics and also human resources, uh, to uh, this related mainly to attract and retain the talent here in the region. And well, this is certainly what we, I wanted to share with you about our participation. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Beatriz, for this insightful uh, presentation from a real use case. So I hope that the uh, attendees uh, can be inspired from your, your real uh, practical example. So as you as you was uh, awarded and you win uh, you won this uh, this proposal from the first call. So then we will share the, the presentation uh, with all of the, the attendees and they can get some uh, keys and examples from your case. And I hope this can help them to, to define and to develop their proposal at, at this stage. So now we move to the next uh, presentation. So now is Ali from Healthcare Without Harm, another supporting organization of uh, Procure Profit community. So Ali, you can start um, introducing the the application process and the matchmaking too. So the floor is yours. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Maria. So my name is Ali Faki, and I work with Healthcare Without Harm Europe. And with Healthcare Without Harm Europe, we're responsible of the technical part of this um, of this process. So if you have now questions, how are you going to uh, apply? How are you going to find a partner? Where can you find the documents? I will be presenting this in the few a few coming minutes i will share my screen to just give me one second i am still seeing the presentation from beatriz oh, okay now uh is my screen on let me um can you confirm that my screen is on yeah, no. mode? no it's not in full mode not in full it's in mode. presenter mode you have to now. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I will present three slides, but then I will move on to a more practical session, share my screen on my um, 
on my computer and see how you can navigate through the platform to get uh, to benefit from the twinning, apply, find the documents, and also find the partners. So we have a very dynamic platform, and everyone who is interested in applying to twinning should be a member of Procure for Health, which also can access this platform. It's a, sim a simple procedure to access this platform. You just have to go to our platform and sign in, which I will show later. Uh, sign in and you would be uh, accepted as a procurer supporting organization and uh, as, or a supplier. Only the procurer organizations are eligible for the twinning call. So when you are inside the platform, you will have very different ways in order to contact with different, uh, different people on the different uh, partners or procurers on the platform. So what you have to, what you have first is you can, you have a space, which is your we call it a customized uh, feed or customized space where you can, as you see on the screen, is to post whatever on your mind, not only related to twinning, but can also be to twinning. So it's not limited to twinning, but it could also be a place to share if you're interested. It's just posting on the main page, it's like a Facebook main, uh, main uh, news feed, and you say, uh, hi, we're looking for a twinning partner and your organization looking uh, for to partner. We have expertise in this topic. You can share an image, you can share a video and you can publish it and everyone will have access to this. And if you leave your email, they will be able to reach out. The next option is, let's say you don't leave your email or you want to reach out with, to someone. You have a messaging tool and this messaging tool is if you find anyone profiles on the on the platform, you could go to that person profile, there's a message, and you could click on the message, a pop-up down would appear, and you will be able to directly message with the, with that person. It could be useful for the twinning tool, but also not limiting for the twinning tool. So the last one is what is related to the twinning tool. We have one section uh, dedicated to the twinning tool, and if you cl click on Procure for Health Twinnings, you will have everything needed regarding how to apply the documents and the uh, finding a partner. Now to have a more practical session, I will end my presentation, but go more, go into my screen and open and open the, uh, the platform and step-by-step step how you can do the steps I just explained. Ali, I just shared through the chat, I just uh, sent the link to all the attendees, the link to become a member, to join to the community. So in case Perfect. some of them are not uh, members yet, that they can register and access during the webinar. So in case they have any question and we can to address them at the end of the presentation. That's good. Perfect. Okay. Uh... So now I'm sharing my full screen, but uh, in... you can see my screen, Maria. Yes. Okay, perfect. So if you sign into the platform uh, on the link uh, Maria sent uh, to everyone, you will, uh, and when you access the platform, if you're a procurer, you will find all these uh, uh, here and you would be able to navigate the platform. The first one that I explained in my presentation is this area where you can add a post and here you can ask, uh, add whatever you're interested in not limited to twinning, but also can be for twinning and say, this is our organization and we're interested in twinning. And this is our email. Please reach out if you're interested. The second one is if you go to the community and to the members or you find any anyone, let's say, uh, this, this user platform. So what you could do is uh, you could message this user as long as you click it. You could just have this messaging pop up and type the person uh, a message. Now, the most important one I want to focus on, which is related directly to twinning, is if you click Procure for Health Twinning, Apply Now, you would access this page. This page, by clicking Download Application Documents, you will directly be linked to all the documents you, can, you have to download in order for the application. You could apply now. If you click on this Apply Now, you would, it would redirect you to the page where you have to upload your documents. Here, you, you have to fill in these and then you upload your documents and we will receive and review your, your application. The last one is, let's say you don't have a partner and you're looking for a partner for twinning. It's simple to, it's simple to click find a partner. So when you click a find a partner, this is what we call an expression of interest. 
you have this space here to post that you are uh, someone who is looking for a partner, you are interested in twinning, you can add as much and less details as you as you like. But of course, if you add more, it's more likely someone would contact you because they would be they would know more what are you look, what what are you aiming with within this twinning opportunity. So these are expressions of interest. We already have some someone looking for a twinning partner. You can find those and contact them. Expression of interest for twinning. So let's say uh, I'm interested. I'm interested to. This is a partner interested for in twinning. I would click on this. They might have left an email. If not, uh, left an email. It's as simple as messaging the person over here. So here I can write the message, and they will receive your message that you are interested, and whatever message you would like to convey. Now, if you are the person who is interested in posting that you are interested in finding a partner, so you simply have to go to find a partner, and on the top right, you will have my expression of interest. By clicking on it, I do not have any, but you could just have a new entry, and it's a very simple process. You, have, you can upload any photo over here with a title that interested in sustainability in innovation or whatever. Then you add the description. And the last one is you just have to add your email address so that people or, or interested uh, partners can reach out to contact you for the twinning. It's a, it's a very simple way forward. It, if you go into the platform, it will direct you. But if you were not able to reach, uh, feel free to contact me through my email or you could also reach me out through the messaging or uh, contact any person procure for health if it's a technical problem they will uh, uh, put me in copy so that I could answer any questions you have if you were not able to uh, access any of what I just uh, show uh, thank you very much I think this is for it for my presentation thank you so much Ali for this uh practical introduction of the submission process and application. So now, Magnus, you can continue. Thank you very much, Maria. And thank you very much, Ali, for your presentation about the tool. Um, I will go a little bit into the different documents that are required uh, when you submit your proposals. It, it's not going to be in depth, but rather just provide an a overview of uh, what, what we are looking for. And then if you have questions, which um, you may, uh, may very well have, you direct them to, to us directly and we will support you. Um, when you download uh, documents, which can be done as, as uh, Ali noted, either through the, uh, the Procure for Health community, uh, which was just presented, or, or through the Procure for Health website, you will find that there are three different forms that are required in, as part of the submission. One uh, admin, admin form for uh, ensuring uh, compliance with the um, eligibility criteria. One technical form uh, where you describe your twinnings approach, who you are and what, what, the, what uh, activities that you intend to perform during your twinnings period. And one financial form for, for describing the financial details of those activities. Uh, I think that we can. Uh, I think that you're, uh, we do expect that of these three forms, uh, where you will likely spend most of your time is in the technical form, uh, to provide as good as good a, a description as possible of the activities that you want to perform. Uh, so this technical form covers three different main perspectives of uh, of what we want you to describe: the perspective of excellence of who you are in the, in the uh, Twinnings um, team, in the Twinnings partnership, uh, what can be the expected impacts of the proposed Twinnings and the collaborations that you do within the, during the Twinnings period. And uh, lastly, uh, the work plan of the implementation of the proposed Twinning. What activities do you perform and what is the timeline of those activities and what is the management of the collaboration, so to speak. Um, for each of these sections, you, you will be, you are provided support text instructions to help you understand what we're exactly looking for, uh, your response to be, and, um, and for, how, for how long page limits and so on uh, that you can enter, enter them. Um, as mentioned, the, uh, the documentation is available on the website, on the platform, 
there's the matchmaking tool on the platform for those of you who are not already considering specific uh, partners in this uh, in this collaboration. Uh, we've also got uh, previously recorded webinars that you can go through for for more added details. And as Ali mentioned, also we really want to stress that if there are any other questions, um, you can direct them towards. Uh, Ali for the technical parts, myself for more about the content parts, about the twinnings. And if we, if you are not sure, just direct them to any of us and we will divide the answers between ourselves. Um, as promised, I will share just a few tips for anyone uh, having just opened or are currently in the process of designing and uh, producing content for, uh, for your twinnings proposal. Um, which might seem quite basic and straightforward, but nevertheless, they are important to keep in mind uh, when, when uh, producing the content in your proposal. Uh, number one, of course, uh, obviously make sure to answer every question. Uh, and this goes into number two as well, not only answering every question, but make sure that you respond to them uh, in a way that uh, are aligned with the instructions that are given for each question so that we can both be sure that uh, we we receive the information that we are looking for to have as good an explanation as possible of what you intend to do. Um, make Number three, make sure to present the, as good a structure as possible of your twinning. This goes, of course, both for the twinning's proposal and for the actual intended twinnings activities that you want to that you want to perform. Number four and five in terms of excellence, uh, make sure that you use the, the instructions given in the invitation to tender letter, which contain a lot of the instructions of, of what we're looking for in your response. We have a range of different topics and uh, and certain activities that are that can serve as a guide when you fill in your proposal and uh, and do keep them in mind when you uh, when you enter the contents of your proposal and also in in the same sec section address and properly describe the methodology of how you are going to implement or or engage with the activities that you that you intend to perform we're looking for certain parts when it comes to impact, impact in your own organization, how you would work with that impact and what you expect to get out of the uh, of the twinnings partnership. In terms of implementation, we're looking for a, uh, a detailed work plan, something concrete that makes sense, basically, during the period that you will work uh, with this, uh, with this uh, twinning in terms of different tasks, different type milestones that you can consider for the progress of your twinnings. What is the time frame, and what are, what are typical uh, staff and costs that are involved in the activities? And lastly, as mentioned, if you have any concerns or issues or there are any needs for clarifications, do not hesitate to reach out to us and we will support you as best as, best as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you very much for for these uh, for these tips to to prepare a a winning proposal and a good proposal. So I think that they are very helpful and useful for for the the attendees that are interested in this uh, funding opportunity. And we didn't receive any questions through the Q&A box, but I, we received one uh, already answered by you, Magnus, uh, through the, the chat. And if you want to, to answer it uh, lowly, so in case any other uh, attendee has the same question, so the question is from Maria Casado. So it's, uh, it's necessary for the training to take place for both parts with public entities or non-profit organization, or one of the parts could be a private company as long as it has an impact on public health. Magnus, if you want to, to answer loudly. Certainly. I think this, this is a quite typical question that, that we're actually receiving, um, touching upon these twinnings. Uh, no, this is only uh, one of the important uh, criteria for eligibility is that 
partners, and that means both partners are uh, public procurers and active in in uh, in healthcare. Meaning, typically, there are healthcare providers or or um, similar. Um, this, of course, goes to the uh, the the main purposes of the twinnings of uh, of uh, promoting uh, capacity building and knowledge exchange between different procurers public procurers who are active in public procurement that are working with it that are operational with it and might have different types of experience that they can share in the twinnings okay perfect i think that it's been good answer so if anyone has any questions so you can send through uh, through the QA box or or maybe the chat if you prefer. So the idea is to to get all of them collected in the QA box, but as the um, as the chat is uh, enabled as well, so you can give your concern and thoughts through both um, through both functionalities. So it's the same. But uh, I think that everything is very clear if nobody has any questions. So I wanted to let you know that we will have uh, another uh, session, another practical session on uh, November 29th at 10 a.m. So I just uh, share the link so you can register. I just send it, I just type it in the, in the chat. So we will have this session, this additional session to solve and to address uh, those uh, doubts you can have, you may have regarding your proposal as it will uh, be organized uh, five, six years uh, before the deadline. Um, you can prepare uh, from, from now until this uh, day, you can prepare your question and we can uh, address them during this session. So the, the main objective of this session is to help you to finalize your, your proposal and to to solve the the doubts that you can you may have so i think that we just received a question from maria casado uh, through the q a box is this webinar going to be uploaded after you to have access to it yes of course uh, yes maria i will upload the the recording on our youtube channel as well as on the project web page. And also I will send you a follow-up email after the the meet the webinar. Uh, always I send the, the follow-up email with the link so you can access to the presentation and the and the recording. So everything will be available in our Procure for Health website. So you will receive the the link to access. And if you have any any question after the session, you can contact us through the the main contact email uh, from Procure for Health, and also you can send a direct email to to Magnus or me. Okay, so if you don't have to add anything, you don't want to to say anything else, so I think that we can uh, conclude the session 10 minutes earlier. So thank you very much. You can uh, open your cameras, uh, please, panelists, guests, and speaker. Thank you very much for being here today and for joining us and for uh, doing this insightful session. So I hope attendees uh, can uh, get the, the, the great insights from this session and they can understand better the, the aim of these uh, twinning calls and what they have to do to, to prepare a, a winning proposal and to get uh, and what are the benefits from them, what's in it for them to apply to this call. So I think that is uh, a great opportunity, a great uh, funding opportunity and uh, and business supporting opportunity as well. So at the end, the idea is to to share the knowledge and don't reinvent the wheel <laughs> anymore, and to to get the lesson learned and the experience from others that have uh, that are uh, 
facing the same barriers and the same problems in, in innovation procurement and to move forward on this uh, topic. So thank you very much, uh, all of you. Thank you, Beatriz, Caterina, and, and Carla for, for being part of this uh, insightful session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magnus and Ali, as always. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.